Hello. Uh, today in my storytelling playlist, I'm going to talk about role playing, but specifically Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so you can like and subscribe if you want to do that, or hit the bell if you want the notifications and all that stuff. But um, this is a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while because it is, you know, typically on my channel I talk about kind of spiritual things or occult things. Um, whether those are movies or books or my own experiences. Um, but, you know, everyone has hobbies and this is one of my hobbies. And uh, I think when I was younger, I was always a little bit bashful about it because at a certain time in my life, it was not as, as, as accepted as it is now. Um, but I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to kind of talk about two things. The first part is going to be some stories about Dungeons and Dragons um, that I've had the pleasure of kind of being a part of over the years. And then the second half is going to be about appreciation for it. Um, so I'll start uh, in the 80s, I guess. It was the early 80s. Um, I'm kind of an 80s child. I was born in the mid 70s so I kind of grew up in the 80s and um, at that time there was the satanic panic and uh, it was quite a big deal I think um, but you know it started off in music mostly in music um, heavy metal bands you know Judas Priest and things like that uh, and I remember as a kid, you know, these things being very like, oh, you know, what are you um, getting your kid into? Because I, I remember very young, I was into Kiss, right? Um, and I remember having Ace Frehley's solo album, which is pretty odd because I was quite young when it came out. It was probably like five or six. Um, but then I remember when The Elder came out that's one of their albums <laughs> one of their albums that a lot of people don't like but uh, I remember when it came out and I begged my mother to buy it and she relented and she bought it for me and I, I was just mesmerized by this album because of the there's like a hand on the cover and it just kind of fit into everything that I was sort of thinking about but around that time I was with my father um, and my, my parents are divorced, so during the week I would be with my mom and my stepfather, and on the weekends I'd go to my dad's house. Um, and so I kind of had like this double life in a way. In, in my normal neighborhood during the week, I had a bunch of friends and we'd play baseball and whatever, you know, like normal kid stuff. But on the weekends I'd be alone a lot of the time because my dad would have to work and I would go to work with him. And I mentioned this a bit in my creative life uh, storytelling video, but, um, you know, I had to find things to occupy my time. And one of those things was art, but uh, the other thing became D&D. So um, the first time I saw it, I was in a department store with my father in the toy section, and I saw the red dragon box. I put it on the screen right now, um, and it just like blew me away. I'm like, what is this? And it seems so inaccessible, but also so mesmerizing. Um, so I got it home. My, my dad bought it for me. Uh, and I got it home and I opened it up and it was just all these books, you know, and dice. And I didn't know what it was. I had no idea how to even play it. Um, I would say at my age, it was a little bit difficult to read. Um, so... My father eventually helped me learn how to play it. Um, and, you know, it wasn't easy to learn because it, you know, if you don't know the, the process of it, it's kind of hard to explain. It takes some time to learn it, especially if you don't have someone that already knows how to play. And in the case of my father, he didn't know how to play. So we had to kind of meticulously go through the book to get to the point where we could actually figure it out. Um, but anyway, um, I started playing. I played a little bit with him. And once I got the hang of it, I started playing a bit by myself, uh, which wasn't quite as fun, but I did. And then eventually I introduced it to my cousin um, and we started playing it. 
But around that time, the satanic pan panic got worse and worse, and they started targeting Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I remember there being a cartoon on at the time. Um, it's pretty, pretty dated now. I've seen it recently, and it's not that good actually. But when I was a kid, it was pretty great. Um, and I remember there were toys that were tied to the cartoon, and I used to play with those. Um, but my mom eventually told me that I could not have it because of this idea that uh, housewives were putting out that if you play Dungeons and Dragons, you're going to get seduced by the devil and, you know, all this other stuff. So she took it away from me and I was very upset. <laughs> like, even to this day, I'm still a little upset about it. Um, but one thing that it did teach me is that uh, I'm a very curious person and I don't like when things are withheld from me. Um, so there was a great lesson there that when something is, um, when there's something I want to learn, I will do anything I can to try to learn about it. Uh, and that's basically what I did. I ended up saving my money and I bought it again. And then I kept it at my father's house and I didn't tell her that I had it. Uh, and I kept playing it. Um, and, you know, I played with my cousin and, you know, we played up until a few, first few years of high school. Uh, and I remember those times fondly because, you know, it was just him and I in our room because I used to live with him. I moved out of my mom's house, um, short, not too long after the, after she got rid of the game, like a few years after that. Um, but I moved into my cousin's house because I had a little bit of high school left and my dad kind of lived far away. And so we all thought it was a better idea for me to finish high school at the same high school. So I just stayed with them for like a year. Um, and during that time, my cousin and I, got, and I got really close and became like brothers. And, you know, a lot of it was those memories of playing Dungeons and Dragons in our room um, getting, you know, ordering a pizza and in Detroit, there's uh, Fago cola, but we would drink peach Fago and we'd watch hockey games or, um, Kung Fu theater was on at like midnight on like a Saturday night. We watched that lots of great times watching scary movies with, uh, his sister and their friends, many, many great times. But I think one of the greatest things about that time was playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I, because I think it really like stimulated my imagination. Um, and so once we got in, into deeper into high school, we kind of forgot about it a bit because, you know, girls and stuff came more important. And then we had like a full on campaign. And that's where it really kind of blossomed because before that we were just playing modules together. Um, but in this case, it became a full on campaign with some pretty interesting characters. Um, and I got really into painting figurines um, at that time, which is also a very creative thing to do, I think. Um, and, you know, the two couples, we lived in a house together. We split a big house, a, re a rental, and we had an extra bedroom. And so we kind of made that the D&D &D room and we'd go in there and, you know, we had the table always set up and we'd play usually at least once a week on like a Friday night, instead of going to the bar or whatever, we'd have a couple drinks at our house and play. Uh, and it was quite fun. Um, but, you know, as things changed, that kind of group fell apart. You know, um, we moved on. And in my 20s, I didn't really play for a long time. In my late 20s, there were a few random times where someone's like, oh, do you, have you ever played this? I'm like, yeah. Oh, let's play. So I'd play like one time, then it would just kind of fall apart. Um, and so on and on, you know, kind of, it, it sat dormant, I guess, in my life until I moved to Korea. And, um, then a friend of mine, uh, we were playing risk a lot because in Korea, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of hobbies that you can do here. Um, unless they're kind of like mountain climbing or things like that. So a lot of the foreigners that are here make little groups, you know, if you like a book club or meditation club or whatever, but we ended up making this D and D group, um, because he was interested, he had never played before, and I told him I had played, and so, 
you know, we got the books and started reading up on it. And then, you know, it was initially us too, and we were kind of trying to convince other friends to play, and most people were quite resistant. But one thing that is funny about D&D is that usually when someone's resistant, the minute that they play, it's the complete opposite. They're just like enamored by it and seduced. So that's basically what happened. A few other friends got kind of seduced into it. Um, and, you know, we had one or two other people that kind of were there for a little while, but they kind of dropped off. And then we sort of solidify with like five people. And we've been doing it now for, I think, more than six years. Um, and we, we have several different campaigns, but the initial campaign that we did, our first campaign, is very, very far along. Uh, most of us are like, 17th or 18th level I think so we're almost nearing the end of the kind of normal um, D&D cycle and it's quite difficult to play now because all of the roles are very complicated so we use the platform roll 20 because you know like for example our our rogue you know his sneak attack is crazy so like it's million dice with all these modifiers and it's almost impossible to do with real dice so we use the Roll20 um, uh, platform to kind of help us with that. But, you know, we've had a lot of great times. Um, there's been a lot more alcohol, you know, especially when we first started playing. Not as much now, but when we first started playing, it would get pretty crazy. Um, and some crazy role playing would happen. And, you know, some people are better at role play, playing than others. But there'd always be this kind of funny... Uh, mayhem that would occur and you know each character kind of brought their own bring brings their own um peculiarities to the to the group so it's fun to see how that kind of organically has shaped the campaign um but you know we've played some other things like deadlands and uh our normal campaign is 3.5 but we've also played fifth edition and some even basic D D from here you know here and there um, but I want to uh, tell you one quick story about when we were playing. It's pretty funny. Um, uh, back in the days when we first started and we were getting pretty drunk when we would play, um, one of my friends was, uh, the dungeon master and he had a coffee table, right? It's a very narrow coffee table and it wasn't really conducive to five or six people around it. So I got a piece of foam board, foam core that I put on top of it so we could kind of extend the table out. <laughs> so we had all our figures on the table and stuff. Now we mainly use maps on Roll20, but at that time I kind of print up maps and we'd use figures, um, plastic figures that we found here. Um, and, you know, he was describing something and he's like, oh, I need to get a beer. So he was about to get up to get a beer and he was pretty drunk and he put his hand on, like, on the foam core, did not realizing that it wasn't, the table and he just like broke through it and like tumble <laughs> tumble you know into the ground and all the figures went flying up obviously and the whole you know whole thing just was destroyed but we just cracked up oh my god it was so funny because like when he tumbled he kind of rolled and kind of came back up and so it was like you know it's okay <laughs> it didn't really happen but it definitely happened uh and it was it was just hilarious and you know there have been other times where you know, in-game crazy things have happened. I'm not going to get too much into that. But just, you know, just crazy stuff. And I, I think that's what I'm going to get into now with the appreciation part is one of the great things about this game is uh, the camaraderie. And that's partly happens through the role-playing. Um, and there have been so many you know, hilarious moments based off of this camaraderie between our group in the game and outside the game. Um, and it, be, it can become a little bit, um, what's the word? It can become a little bit esoteric to those outside. They're always like, oh, you're playing that again? Or, you know, we'll be talking about it and they'll be like, what, what are you talking about? Because, you know, it's almost like a second life in some ways. Um, and if someone... It's kind of like if you've watched a movie and someone else hasn't seen the movie and you're trying to talk about it, but you don't want to give it away and like 
there's a similar kind of, uh, you kind of had to be there to experience it thing. And I think that creates a lot of bond between the players because they kind of went through these ordeals together, even though they're not real. Um, you kind of look back, oh, you remember that time we defeated this or you did that crazy hit and did all the damage and got a critical hit and we won that scenario. It just creates a lot of uh, fun banter between the participants. Um, and I just, I think that's a great thing about the game is this collaborative storytelling that takes place. Um, and I really love stories. Uh, so for me, it's a beautiful thing when it, when I come up with some idea as the dungeon master and I can't predict what they're going to do, but what they do makes it even better than I thought it would be, you know, some random idea that they have or some off the wall thing that they do takes it into a whole nother place. Um, and that's the beauty of it. I think one of, one of the great things. And it just, you know, it stimulates your imagination. Um, not a lot of games do that, I think. You know, a video game is very passive because you're just kind of reacting to things as it happens. Yeah, you're making choices, but those choices are very set in stone. There's this illusion of free will in a video game. Um, but to win a video game, you, there's a process that you kind of have to do to get to that point where you can defeat it or whatever. But in... D and D, it's not that cut and dry, and you know, a person, a character can do anything, I mean, as long as it's, as long as it's in the realm of reason, in terms of the world, as far as magic or whatever. But they can literally do anything, so you never know what someone's going to do, and that's pretty cool. It creates kind of a chaos, a chance um, atmosphere that really. Uh, connects with your imagination and helps you tell this collaborative story. Um, I also appreciate the level of problem solving that um, happens when you play uh, and strategy. I've learned a lot uh, about those things to the point where I think if I was ever in a real battle, I actually might do okay, at least as far as like planning it, maybe not physically, but if I had to plan a battle, I think I could probably do it pretty well. Um, so you definitely learn about what works and doesn't work, you know, about flanking someone or creating diversions or things like that. You know, we've we've tried so many plans as players that have just totally went sideways <laughs> where, you know, we, we spent a lot of time. Oh, we're going to do this. You're going to go here. We're going to do that. Come in this way. And then, you know, some random thing happens and all of a sudden you have to reformulate your plan on the fly. And I actually think that's good for your mind because it it helps you have sort of adaptation skills um, and thinking on the fly is very useful in real life I feel like but yeah I don't know I think it's a great game um, and I would say a lot of in my leisure time a lot of the best times I've ever had have been playing D&D &D. also some of the worst times when there's an argument or whatever but that's life you're gonna have arguments um, but I think the good times outweigh the bad. Uh, so, you know, it's like any kind of relationship you have with people, you're going to have, um, you're going to have moments where it doesn't quite work, but that's why you have these relationships because it, it keeps going and you get past those moments that don't quite work and you just kind of go with it, you know? and appreciate the people you have around you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it's a great game. And if you ever played it, you should try it out because it's quite fun. Um, you know, all the additions have something good about them, I think. But I think the best one is 3.5. But it's also the hardest probably to learn to play. Um, but yeah, that's about all I got on d and I might do another video later more detailed about our campaign or something, but I'll see how this one kind of goes over. And if, 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 if anybody wants to hear about our campaign, you can comment in the, in the comments and maybe I'll think about doing a video about that. Or if you have any, any kind of funny things or 
you know, memories that you have about playing D&D &D and why you play it, you can also throw that down there. I'd love to read that. Um, I think it's a great game that most people should try out at least once. And don't ever t let anybody tell you you can't play it or that you're too nerdy and that you should stop playing it because you're too nerdy. Disregard those people. Anyway, have a good day. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.